Everyone, welcome to this session where we're going to be talking about five fantastic tips for marketing you could be doing in your business right now, which might seem like a strange thing to be doing at this juncture, if you like, with uh, uh, a lot of people going into lockdown, shutdown, hibernating, whatever you might be thinking, uh, and business is not happening as normal right now. So, this is actually the time we think you should be uh, going the complete opposite direction and doing more marketing, more activity and more than you've ever done before. Um, and I think a lot of people probably sat thinking, should I be doing it? Should I not? They're fearful of what's ahead of them. They're worried about should they be spending money? They're worried about will anyone want to buy my product? So all those type of things hopefully we'll be addressing over the coming uh, short session. To do that, I've invited someone special on uh, to help us. Uh, Catherine has joined us. So welcome, Catherine. Hello. Thanks so much for having me, Steve. You are welcome. Now, I've worked with Catherine for, um, apparently, she's told me about the last year and a half. It feels like only two minutes. Uh, but we've worked with loads of marketing companies over the years and have to say the work we've done with Catherine and the, the team have been amazing. We've seen some great results. So I thought, who better to help us um, address some of these questions people have right now? Now, obviously, I come from a travel background. Um, Catherine works with lots of different companies, I think that's fair to say. So we're going to make this, there will be about travel, but obviously this applies to whatever industry you're in. I think that's fair to say. Is that right? Absolutely. So, so let's from... start with a bit of the background to you, if we could, just to um, for anyone who's not met you before. Absolutely. Well, I have about 12, 15, uh, between 12 and 15 years experience in journalism, comms, marketing and PR. Um, my background is I used to be a local journalist, which I did for about eight years. I worked uh, across loads of different titles in the southwest, which gave me a really good understanding of the stories that journalists are after. And they are after stories. And I've spoken to quite a lot on local and national papers recently, and they're crying out for stories and especially positive news stories. So we're going to be talking about how we can use that to your best advantage. Um, so after being in journalism, which I really, really loved, I wanted to um, go into PR and do marketing and PR for small businesses, which is where I've met Steve and some of my wonderful co-workers. I've worked with a number of different people in the travel industry, across the HR sector, hospitality, spas, hotels, um, you know, museums, attractions. Um, so I have a good understanding of all of these, you know, industries that are facing, you know, a really unsettling time at the moment. So hopefully we'll be able to give you some top tips and you'll go away feeling really uplifted and motivated because now is a great time to make the most of your marketing abilities. So we're going to leave you with five tips you can sort of implement straight away. Uh, but you said something now, Catherine, where you said journalists, journalists are crying out for good news stories at the moment. Um, that's not always the case normally, is it? Normally they're like a good bad news story because bad news sells papers. Um, so what's going on? Well, I mean, bad news does sell papers. If you've ever looked at uh, the Express or the Mirror, every week there will be a headline of like snow horror or you know some kind of weather related story because we love weather um and we love a bit of bad news um but actually at the moment there's almost too much bad news and they can't they they, they just can't fill papers with covid19 all the time people wouldn't want to read it they have to acknowledge the situation because it is scary and it's unsettling and it's it's worrying for people and their livelihoods um you know and that's completely understandable so they have to acknowledge the situation and then they have to write stories as well so there's all these other things that are like features so there'll be travel supplements there'll be all sorts of different supplements book supplements that still need to be filled in you know with a respectful nod to the global situation that we're facing which is you know quite frankly unprecedented and you're talking travel supplement book supplements that that could be online media offline media the sort of whole range couldn't it absolutely and you've got to also remember that one of the most powerful marketing tools that you can have is actually getting a story in your local news as well 
because a lot of what people don't realize is a lot of the stories that you see in the nationals have actually been picked up from local from local news sources um so actually this is a good time so one of the things that i would say is you have to acknowledge in whatever you're doing currently the situation because if you don't you look tone deaf and that's you know not where any of us want to be at the moment we have to acknowledge that people are going through a tough time they're worried about their mortgages and their businesses obviously there's been some fantastic news recently from the government with regards to the self-employed and obviously those that are put on furlough during this time so that's helping to reassure people um but yes as i say acknowledge what is happening and then you know go and sort of show what you can do to help so my first top tip is to be there with your customers whoever they are whatever business you are in you have to say that like we are all in this together now there has never been something on this global scale before um i was talking to one journalist and he said the only thing that he could think of that had had this many this sort of far-reaching implications where every single person in the world was affected by something was actually world war ii so that's the scale that we're talking about. So number one, be there for your customers. We're all in this together. Um, COVID-19 will be on everyone's minds. So be sympathetic to that. Acknowledge it in your marketing messaging and then show how you're there for your clients and your businesses. Show that we're all in this together. And following so on from that, I was, what, sorry? What sort of examples might that be then? You say show it in your marketing messages. Um, for a small business, what might they be doing and how could they weave that in um, to what they're doing? Because m maybe they've just all of a sudden stopped marketing. Absolutely. Well, you could think about the ways that you're doing it. So if you're a food business, perhaps um, I know a lot of small businesses are still getting their food from their wholesalers, but then they're packaging things up and selling it onto the local community. Or perhaps you're doing deliveries now and you're, you know, I saw um, a well-known brewer in the Southwest is now doing a drive through beer, beer shop where people can come in, pick up things and go. Um, so there's all sorts of things like that that you can do in your marketing messaging that show that you're you're there for your community, which leads into my second point which is to be helpful and to be empathetic um, because COVID-19 has affected everybody um, so what can you do as a business to help people what do your customers need from you right now and what skills do you have that you could help now this could be a sense of humor within you know this dark time you know it could be sharing things that are happening in your community that people could get involved with whether that's food banks or you're donating something you could perhaps um, volunteer your time. So perhaps you're a business, I've seen one company that made gin and now they're making hand sanitizer from uh, the gin heads because it's got 60% alcohol still left. So they've been giving that out to all the emergency services around here. Um, perhaps you could give free advice. Um, in, in a lot of the time in business, we have this formal business mindset where we, we feel we have to be very straight and we have to be very, well, very formal, very business-like, whether that's a suit and tie or whatever. And now is the time to break out of that and to be human and to be approachable. So for example, could you give a discount to NHS staff from your business to show that your appreciation, could you do something to help older people in isolation? Um, you've got to remember that you are the specialist here. Um, so could you help provide some, some help with homeschooling? So for example, if you're an accountant, perhaps you could do something like, you know, you could do a, a quick lesson plan or a PDF download on how to do percentages or, you know, a profit and loss. Um, for example, for myself, I obviously do PR and marketing, but I'm also quite techy. So one of the first things I did when I saw this was I did a free to download guide as to how to get on Zoom because a lot of people have never heard of Zoom before um, and suddenly everyone's using it. And, you know, my my skills, I'm, I'm not a nurse, I'm not a doctor, I, I wish I was, I wish I could go out there and help. Um, I've signed up to be an NHS support worker, but, you know, that my specialist skills are PR and marketing and helping people. So that's what I did and it's completely free. It's not a money maker for me but it's just something that I can do to help my community. Um, another thing that I did 
Um, my mum is self-isolating because she's uh, an, in the at-risk group, so I helped her get online and we did a list of all the different things that we could do positively via um, Zoom to keep the spirits up. So whether that's a cook along, whether that's, you know, a, a podcast listening party, whether it's cocktail hour, whatever it is, we could start a book club, all these things. And I sent a list of ideas to my local radio station and I ended up being interviewed on there and we featured on BBC One on the main news as well, talking about how we were going to keep in touch because, yeah, the, the media are looking for those those good stories. So for us in travel, <clears throat> maybe it's mm. up what you're going to say that. So this could be something like um, now we, we don't have customers traveling at the moment because they can't travel anywhere, but people want to travel. So uh, that whole give us gain concept of let's give something away. What about if we put together a list of uh, webcams, active webcams from around the world? So you could do around the world in 80 webcams just as a bit of fun. Um, so you could actually just go and look and you know, have that inspiration of different destinations. Or Absolutely, 100%. It's all about another top tip, top tip yep. number three, be creative. Because a lot of hotels and travel businesses, like you rightly say, people aren't traveling but what they're able to do is you know if you can share photos and you can share that experience people and encourage people to share their experiences as well so you could have a virtual tour around the world so you could encourage people to tag you in their throwback photos to what's your favorite place you've ever visited where is the place that you are going to visit in 2021 when all of this is over where do you really want to go where was your ideal honeymoon destination it's all about getting creative so although maybe you're a hotelier and you've had to shut well perhaps your chef could you know, get creative in the kitchen and show people recipes that they could make at home whilst they're isolating. So maybe that's a taste of Thailand or, you know, your favorite home cooked meal from Spain, you know, just like, you know, your madre would make. Those sort of things that are going to really connect with people are free and are helpful, but it builds that, it builds that love that people have for your brand. Um, another thing could be, you know, if you are, I don't know, a gardener or again, a hotel or a destination. If you've got a garden, can you go out there, do some yoga while you're out on the balcony or wildlife gardening? Because people are stuck inside and they want that nature fix. They want that aspirational holiday experience still. Could you do a virtual tour? There are loads of things you've got to, you could do. You've just got to get a bit creative with it. Could be something as simple as uh, recommendations of what to watch on Netflix. Absolutely. What are the top de travel destinations? Because I don't know about you, but I've been binge watching anything with David Attenborough because it transports you into another world. So anything like that that you could suggest for people would be great. Brilliant. I'm going to be doing that straight after this. <laughs> it's fantastic. And it's amazing the uplifting nature of just watching something like that. You know, it's just transformative. So that's really good. So that would be my uh, teach. One of the most important things in marketing is uh, we use the term joy and awe. So A-W-E, not like, ah, oh, but, oh, you know, so we do that. Um, that's all about creating a feeling for people. So you, whether it's in your advertising, in the travel industry or whatever, you want to have that sensation of, you know, imagine the sand between your feet as you walk along a deserted beach. Listen to the waves, you know. Imagine tasting that incredible curry you had in a street market in India. It's all about creating that aspiration and that feeling within someone. And definitely you can use that within your marketing. Amazing. So that was number three, was it? That was number three. So number four is to stop your scheduled posts. Um, a lot of people use scheduling tools, and I would say that's a really, really good way of scheduling things. But beware of your scheduling posts because a day in a day at the moment is a long time in politics and things change really, really quickly. And a message that maybe was appropriate last week um, might be a bit tone deaf this week. So obviously last week we had the situation where people were saying, go out onto the National Trust properties, go out into nature. And then obviously over the weekend, we had the situation where Snowden had its busiest day ever. 
and everyone was told, no, you should be social distancing. So it's just about being aware of those changes in messaging. Have a look at all the things that you've scheduled and make sure that they're still appropriate. Um, and you know, think about the different content that you could put on, um, like we've mentioned previously. Brilliant, great one. Okay, and my last one, um, apologies while I take a sip of water here. Not a problem, these Sorry are really good, that. thank you. <laughs> is to not be too modest. It can be really difficult at the moment to feel like, should I be marketing? Is, that, is this okay? Is this going to offend people? Because people are going through a tough time. Um, and we'd say that actually, if you're doing something good within your community, um, you know, say so. As we said before, the media are crying out for positive stories. So if you're using, you know, your one window a day um, to exercise, to maybe run around your neighborhood delivering groceries to those in need, then say so. It doesn't have to be a massive plug for your business. It could literally just be that you happen to be wearing a T-shirt when you do it. Or it could say, you know, um, you know, from, you know, uh, you know, Mrs. Mrs. Wilson from Grandma's Bakery in Torquay went running and delivered everything to her neighbours. Or it could be, you know, just that you've signed up to the NHS. It's just another way of showing that we're in this together. And again, creating that feel good factor around your brand, because at the moment you might not be able to do a huge amount of sales but it's about brand awareness it's about making sure you don't leave a gap in the market so that when this is over you know and it, and it will be over we don't know yet when that will be but it will um that that you are there and people know that you are there and that they care about you and they care about you succeeding and there's a lot of groundwork that you can do right now to ensure that people really do connect with your brand in a nice feel good way. And although you might not see a lot of sales now, people will remember you and will come back and they will be warm to you when you put, start putting out sales messages again. So I guess with tip number five, remember tips one through four before you do number five and then everything should work out. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, as I say, we are all in this together and we can you know show what we're what we're doing it's not necessarily about making money um you know it is about being there and being helpful even if you're just signposting different things in your community that could help people you know people will appreciate that and will remember or you know like you say your your netflix recommendations or you know books from a desert island you know all these different you know books that could transport you or take you away um you know top tips for the garden all of those things but I guess the key thing out of all this is don't stop marketing. Don't no. stop communicating. It, your message might change and in fact will change because people aren't necessarily going to buy from you today, but being there for people, being that, that um, person they can talk to, that helpful person so that when they are ready to buy, you're there. Absolutely. And I would say that it's never been a better time to actually be human online. Um, I, as I say, I think we struggle sometimes to, you know, break through that business veneer, but this is a good time to do that. Um, and yes, do remember to, you know, if you have made a list of things, you know, you can send them off to your local paper or your local radio station. There's no harm in being helpful at all um, because it will people will remember that you did something good and you were there for them when we were all going through a really horrible time and i think if there's one good thing that's going to come out of all this is i think we are going to become better people and yes. better communicators because of things just like this we're having to find new ways to adapt and talk and share absolutely and i think i don't know about you but i've never been more social the number of people I have caught up with in the last couple of weeks because, you know, everybody's going, you know, connection is so important. And even if we can't be there in person, we can be there via a phone call, via a text. And I think you're right. I think there will be a shift in society. And I hope that, you know, we do come out of this a kinder, um, you know, and a more connected community than we went into it. So Dave, our head of sales, one of the things he's been doing is texting 25 people a night he's been going through his phone and just connecting with 25 people he hasn't connected to in a long time not to sell them anything but just to say hi 
And it's been amazing the response he's had just from that one activity. It's really lovely because everybody, you know, we all lead busy lives, you know, and, and so often we're busy rushing around, doing things, hustling, working on our businesses, you know, trying to keep fit, trying to keep the kids fed, you know, all of those things. Um, and it's nice to just think of other people and let them know that you're thinking of them, even if you haven't spoken in a while. Um, as I say, it's never been a better time to be authentic, be yourself and be human. I think we always in the past use the excuse we don't have time to pick up the phone and talk to people or send them messages or just connect. Now that's the one thing we do have time. So this is the opportunity to connect. Um, and it's so simple. It's probably the simplest form of marketing. And it's the one thing we don't normally do. But now we can. Absolutely. And I've just thought of another top tip. So this is tip. This is tip number six for free. It's, you know, if you do have time and, you know, we do have more time at the moment, then use it as time to build up a bank of content. And what do I mean by content? It's a very PR and marketing word. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, things like blogs for your website, like um, lists of destinations, that things that you can use on your Facebook page your Twitter, your Instagram, dig out, go through all your phone, dig out your old photos, you know, think about things that you can do. Because when, you know, when this does come to an end, we're going to be busier than ever. So use this as a time to create that content so that you're ready to go, you know, and you can use it a bit now, but it's evergreen content. What I mean by that, again, sorry, jargon, marketing jargon, apologies. Um, what I mean by that is that you can use it again and again. So whether that is, you know, your top five places that you must visit in America or your, you know, top three eateries in Quebec, those sort of things are quick and easy to do. And you can create that bank of content to share. So you've got that again for, for people to use. I was uh, taught that using phrases like blogging and evergreen content is cool between us because we know it. But if you're not <laughs> used to that uh, phrase, Something I was taught was uh, helpful marketing. Just think of it. Yeah. How can I be helpful? Yes. How, what would you like to see? Think about your audience and think about who they are and what they want right now. And maybe even just go through the exercise of talk, thinking about, well, who's your client? How old are they? What do they read? What do they watch? Where do they work? What are their, what are their hobbies and interests? Think about where they are so you can think about where to market to them and think about what they would be interested in reading or seeing. Um, and again, that can lead you to write different things, even if it is just three little bullet points, five little bullet points and a picture. That could be a Facebook post. That could be a Twitter post, an Instagram post. You can use it across everything. So, yeah, it's just thinking, using that time to your best advantage. Well, that was absolutely amazing, Catherine. Thank you very much. Five oh. tips and a bonus one. <laughs> we like to uh, be helpful. What can we say? Well, there you go. Proof uh, proof that it works. So thank you very much. I'm sure we'll actually have you back on again very soon with some more tips. So thank you very much for that. I look forward to catching up soon. Take care. Thank you so much.